Uh, we have been talking about uh, the graphene. Um, the main uh, thing is about the electronic structure of graphene uh, which is under consideration for this uh, course. So, uh, we have derived uh, the low energy dispersion of graphene. The energy as a function of k, this uh, gamma, k, m, gamma, these are points in the Brillouin zone and the band structure is shown here. This is a uh, uh, density functional theory uh, band structure, a DFT band structure as it is called. And um, you see the, the pi uh, and the pi star which are the two bands which are closest to the Fermi level and the Fermi level is kind of boxed in red. In fact, uh, this uh, is the this is the Fermi energy at 0 and uh, if you look at it carefully this pi and uh, pi star bands they cross linearly at these uh, points uh, these uh, the gamma and the m points. And um, uh, these, this is what uh, gives rise to the, the low energy linear dispersion uh, which is why uh, they are called as massless Dirac fermions. Um, however, uh, they are not massless, uh, they have electronic mass and um, um, they are also uh, the density of states uh, is also uh, linear in energy and so on. Uh, even though they look like a pseudo relativistic dispersion, uh, the velocity is still um, c by 300 uh, which is uh, you know the 300 times the smaller uh, than the velocity of light. Uh, so, uh, and that uh, corresponds to the Fermi velocity of electrons um, in most uh, metals. So, this uh, falls in that uh, uh, category and uh, you know look at the uh, 6 Dirac points uh, whose uh, coordinates have been found and uh, these are the 6 Dirac points that you see here. Uh, what we have discussed is that uh, they are not all independent, uh, they depend on each other uh, by uh, the addition or subtraction of the reciprocal lattice vectors and only 2 of them uh, being independent and the rest 4 can be generated by adding or subtracting the reciprocal lattice vectors and these uh, points which are independent are called as the k and the k prime points and these are known as the Dirac points. And the name came because um, the dispersion is Dirac like which is uh, that of uh, in this case it is a massless uh, Dirac form and linear dispersion. So, this is something uh, that is uh, slightly non-trivial in the context of condensed matter physics. Uh, in condensed matter physics, um, these uh, relativistic dispersions are not common and in fact, the k square dispersions are more common, but in this particular case, they are the low energy dispersion is uh, linear and uh, uh, they correspond to massless Dirac fermions. Okay. So, uh, these are things that we have discussed. Now, this is the uh, experimental conformation of the Dirac points. These are uh, the photo emission uh, studies uh, will not discuss uh, where one actually calculates the binding energy and as a function of the uh, planar wave vector. So, it is basically uh, a photon is uh, made to shine on this surface and these electrons are emitted and these electrons are captured uh, which would tell us this uh, uh, binding energy and so on. And uh, this is plotted as a function of uh, uh, the planar wave vector, the kx, ky wave vector and this are this given as k parallel and you see this uh, uh, Dirac like dispersion which are very apparent here uh, linear dispersions at uh, or near the Fermi level. And uh, this is uh, taken from this uh, paper, uh, there are many other uh, conformations of the Dirac spectrum. So, uh, we come back to the Hamiltonian for graphene and the Hamiltonian uh, looks like uh, this. Uh, I have taken h cross equal to 1 and uh, v f uh, is uh, you can write it a v capital F uh, that corresponds to the Fermi velocity. Q x and Q y are small wave vectors uh, where the k vectors which are uh, I mean we usually uh, represent the k vectors uh, the wave vectors by the k. So, this k is um, so, q is equal to k minus k or k minus k prime. So, uh, you expand 
the wave vectors in the vicinity of the Dirac points which are k and k prime points and write the small wave vector as q and this is what is written in terms of qx and qy. So, this q is uh, nothing but qx uh, qy and um, a Vf is the Fermi velocity, uh, sigma x and sigma y they are Pauli matrices. However, they do not uh, uh, represent the spin degrees of freedom. Uh, sigma actually stands for the sublattice degree of freedom. And uh, you, you see a gamma z here which uh, is, so this is the, the valley degree of freedom. And here gamma z is exactly same as uh, the z component of the Pauli matrix, but they, it is a 2 by 2 uh, matrix where uh, plus 1 uh, denotes the k valley. Uh, that is the k Dirac point and minus 1 that corresponds to the k prime valley. Okay. So, that uh, so uh, essentially what happens is that you have a h of q which is equal to a v f and there is a q x sigma x plus a q y sigma y. Uh, this is the Hamiltonian at the k point one of the Dirac points and uh, for the other one uh, you have a minus sign here q x sigma x minus q x sigma x q y sigma y. Uh, so, this is at k prime. Okay. So, in a compact notation uh, we can write down uh, at both the uh, Dirac points we can write down the Hamiltonian like this one has to keep in mind that uh, there is no spin in the problem. Uh, however, the Pauli spin matrices um, they denote uh, the sublattice degree of freedom and uh, uh, in addition to that the gamma denotes the valley degree of freedom. Okay. Now, what is intended here is that uh, to understand what are the symmetries of graphene and um, what do these symmetries do? Uh, what will happen when we uh, break these symmetries? And uh, one of the main things that happens is that these uh, Dirac points are robust that is there is no gap that opens up uh, in any of the 6 points uh, uh, the Dirac points that we had shown and um, uh, out of that uh, we will only talk about uh, the k and k prime. Uh, so, uh, these uh, the symmetries of graphene actually protect uh, these uh, Dirac points. Okay. So, uh, this is what we have to understand and uh, in that context we have to understand the symmetries of graphene. So, the question is what are the symmetries of graphene? Just uh, quick look at the unit cell. Okay. And each of them are occupied by the carbon atoms okay. and carbon atoms in this uh, 1 s to 2 s to 2 p 2 configuration. Uh, so, per carbon atom there are 2 electrons. However, 1 electrons forms a a sigma bond uh, which uh, gives the stability of the structure and the pi electrons uh, are only available for conduction as uh, we have shown in the band structure. Okay. Now, uh, the two symmetries that are quite important in this context is that uh, uh, we will talk about the, the inversion symmetry or this is also called as the sublattice symmetry. And this is quite common or rather it is it is quite trivial to understand that if you draw uh, an axis which is perpendicular to the bond connecting the two 
carbon atoms. Uh, so, this corresponds to A sub lattice and this corresponds to the B sub lattice. Uh, then uh, changing A to B and B to A will not change the structure or uh, will not do anything to the Hamiltonian and that is why um, this uh, is uh, the Hamiltonian uh, that we have written in the last slide. Uh, this is invariant under this uh, transformation or these uh, it has uh, inversion and sub lattice symmetry. Okay. And the next thing that uh, we will do, uh, we will show in details is a time reversal symmetry. And in this particular case as we have seen earlier that uh, there is no spin here. So, uh, because there is no spin the time reversal operation is simply the complex conjugation or in some literature you will actually see that it is written with a unitary operator multiplied by the complex conjugation, but they mean the same thing. There is a third symmetry which is a crystalline symmetry. And uh, this is uh, called as a C3 symmetry. Uh, what it means is that it is a C3 rotational symmetry. So, if you take a point in the at the center of the hexagon and uh, then uh, you give a 2 pi by 3 rotation uh, to the entire system, then uh, you know this uh, carbon atom here will go here and this will go here and so on. Okay. So, they will just move and the, uh, the honeycomb or the hexagon will remain unchanged and this is the crystalline symmetry that we have. Now, uh, this we are not going to discuss, uh, one is that uh, this of course, uh, forms the Dirac points, but uh, this has no role in preserving uh, the Dirac points or making the Dirac points to be invariant or it does not. Uh, uh, sort of uh, give anything or rather uh, impart anything to the topological considerations for graphene. So, we will not uh, talk about it uh, in details, but uh, then one should know that uh, this symmetry uh, crystalline symmetry exists. Okay. So, uh, let me uh, look at the inversion symmetry. So, this inversion symmetry can be tested uh, by uh, a, a sigma z operator and this uh, sigma z uh, h of uh, q uh, sigma z uh, that has to be tested and uh, this should come out to be minus h of uh, q. Okay. Uh, so, this uh, denotes that graphene has inversion symmetry. So, uh, it is not difficult to see that uh, because you have uh, this H of Q uh, simply has uh, apart from that V f it has a, a Q x sigma x plus a Q y sigma y and uh, then we will have terms such as uh, uh, so sigma z sigma x sigma z uh, that will give rise to a minus sigma x and uh, a sigma z sigma y sigma z will again give rise to a minus sigma y. Uh, so, your uh, sigma z uh, h of q uh, sigma z is equal to uh, h cross v f well uh, we can drop h cross but or you can keep h cross it does not matter this is equal to minus q x uh, sigma x gamma z which uh, in you know uh, connects or rather uh, denotes uh, both k and k prime uh, Hamiltonians uh, and then there is a q y uh, sigma y. Okay. And uh, this can be uh, easily uh, taken out the minus sign and then we have a q x sigma x uh, gamma z plus a q y sigma y which is nothing but equal to minus h of q. Okay. So, graphene has uh, inversion symmetry. And as I said that uh, you can also call it a sub lattice symmetry.
okay. So, this is one of the important things about uh, graphene that it is the Dirac points are protected by uh, these uh, symmetries uh, of course, we will have to uh, consider one of one more uh, which is a time reversal symmetry. So, this two Okay. And uh, what we mean by time reversal symmetry is uh, uh, we just define uh, K to be this complex conjugation operator in fact, if the real spin is included which uh, may be done when uh, the spin orbit coupling is there then uh, alone these uh, complex conjugation operator will not be sufficient we will have to also include the sigma y part ok. So, uh, this uh, h of q uh, this dagger uh, this is equal to h cross v f uh, uh, now I will I'll write it at uh, only at um, the k point. Uh, so, this is uh, a so uh, I just take uh, only one uh, Hamiltonian this q. So, I only write it at uh, k point which is uh, q x sigma x plus q y sigma y. So, this is at uh, k point if you want to write it at the other Dirac point that is at the other valley these are called valleys these Dirac points are called valleys. The time reversal symmetry actually what it does is that it uh, changes the Hamiltonian from one valley to another and um, so uh, this is um, uh, this is at k at the one of the Dirac points if you apply this uh, time reversal operator. Uh, then it gives you this which can be written as minus h cross v f and uh, I hope you understand why there is a minus sign. The minus sign arises because sigma y is a complex uh, matrix even though it is Hermitian it is like this ok. Uh, so, that is why it changes sign when you do a complex conjugation it changes sign. So, this is equal to a minus sigma x q x a plus sigma y q y and that is nothing but the Hamiltonian at the k prime point ok. So, that tells you that uh, we get this uh, k h of q uh, k inverse uh, this is equal to a h star of minus k ok and you can just do h star of minus k uh, or k or rather this is I should write it as q because q is a small wave vector. Uh, this is uh, q uh, this is equal to h cross v f uh, minus sigma x q x plus sigma y uh, q y and so on ok. Because we take a h star and then we also change. So, this term does not change sign because um, sigma y changes sign uh, upon this uh, doing a star of that which means taking a complex conjugate and uh, q y is also change sign because there is a minus q there I should write it with a vector here. But the first uh, term that is sigma x uh, q x uh, sigma x does not change sign, but q x changes sign and that is why you get a minus sign and this is nothing but uh, you know the Hamiltonian that uh, corresponds to the k prime point. If you take the k point Hamiltonian to be the plus sign then this is a minus k or you could take it um, alternatively the uh, k prime Hamiltonian to have a plus sign and then the k will have a minus sign. So, there is no nothing that is uh, puts a restriction on which one you can take uh, k or k prime one of them is k the other is uh, k prime ok. So, what it tells you is that uh, the uh, graphene Hamiltonian remains 
invariant under uh, both inversion and time reversal. So, this is one and this is another and it remains invariant under both and um, the product of them. So, combined both these symmetries sigma z uh, k uh, this and then uh, h star of minus k and sigma z k tagger this is equal to minus h of well you can write it as k or q uh, depending upon we will write as q. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, called as the particle hole symmetry it is just a uh, the sum literature uh, calls it as particle hole symmetry because it is a product of these uh, two symmetries that uh, are uh, one of them is the inversion the other is the time reversal symmetry. Okay. So, we go back to our uh, earlier discussion that these uh, symmetries are uh, essential for um, giving rise to a topological invariant or giving rise to uh, something that remains um, you know um, invariant and in this particular case of course, uh, the uh, even if you um, sort of uh, they as you uh, sweep k uh, or the q momentum vector um, the number of uh, energy levels below the Fermi energy and number of energy levels above the Fermi energy they do not uh, change. And um, uh, so, there the system remains invariant under these uh, symmetries and uh, then what is the uh, you know in other other than that what remains invariant the Dirac points remain invariant in the sense that Dirac points can uh, move in the Brill 1 zone if you do something to the band structure. But if you do not do any additional uh, gap closing uh, then uh, the Dirac points will remain where they are uh, or rather uh, they they will have uh, 0 band gap at the at the Dirac points. Okay. Uh, they may move uh, in the Brill 1 zone. Uh, if you change the bands or rather uh, you know deform the bands, but the gap will not open. Okay. Uh, one of the main things that is important in this particular case is that um, whether we can make graphene topological. Okay. Let me box this and uh, why we are asking this question? Uh, we are asking this question based on a few hunches that we have or suspicion the, do, uh, that we have and I uh, will tell you what those suspicions are. But uh, can we make graphene like a quantum hall sample which had uh, chiral edge uh, states and so on that is the edge is uh, behave completely differently than the bulk that is the bulk remains insulating and the edges conduct. Can we make uh, graphene to have those kind of properties? Uh, can it uh, behave like a quantum hall sample which has uh, sort of topological invariant uh, as a churn number and so on. So, uh, that question or rather uh, this kind of hunches arise from the fact that uh, uh, the Berry phase in graphene uh, is non-zero. So, we have discussed Berry phase, uh, we know what uh, Berry phase is uh, just to remind you that um, okay. So, just to remind you that uh, if H uh, the Hamiltonian of a system depends on some parameter uh, lambda and this lambda depends on time 
and uh, lambda is a slow function of time say for example and then uh, you uh, change lambda and um, uh, you ask the question that uh, after one complete oscillation in t that is t comes back to the same point uh, after a, you know a sort of a full rotation whether the Hamiltonian uh, comes back to the original uh, uh, configuration or rather it represents exactly the same system or there is a phase that it picks up and this phase is irreducible and this irreducibility actually uh, is not the same as the dynamical phase that we are mostly uh, familiar with uh, that is um, exponential i e t by h cross it is not that kind of a phase because that kind of a phase will not appear in observables because you will take a mod square and a exponential i e t by h cross and an exponential minus i e t by h cross will go away and uh, will not have any uh, phase information left and the time will also go away. So, is it uh, like that or uh, is there anything uh, special about uh, uh, the Berry phase in graphene and it turns out that there is uh, something that is interesting and um, uh, which gives rise to the fact that uh, we uh, do have a reason to believe that uh, graphene uh, can become topological. So, let us calculate the Berry phase in graphene. So, let me take this uh, Hamiltonian the low energy Hamiltonian to be h of q which uh, is let us call it a q dot sigma I have taken sort of omitted the v f also it does not matter you can put it back if you are writing uh, the full Hamiltonian with h cross v f and so on so forth. Okay. Uh, because of this two dimensionality uh, we can write q in the polar coordinates. Uh, so, you can write this as a q uh, and then a cos phi and a sin phi. Okay. It is like q x and q y uh, where q x is equal to q cos phi and q sin phi and this is actually the magnitude of q is uh, let us just write it as simply as q. So, this is the uh, q vector in this um, Hamiltonian that uh, we have written let us call it equation number 1 and let us call it equation number 2. Okay. And phi is the polar angle that we consider in two dimension. All right. So, h of q which is what we have written here is nothing but so now I will just add this uh, Pauli matrices reminding you once again that they do not uh, uh, really express the spin degrees of freedom, but rather they are the sub lattice degrees of freedom and this is like a, a cosine phi minus i sin phi uh, coming from uh, this one is coming from sigma x the first term and the second term is coming from sigma y. So, uh, cos phi plus i sin phi and a 0 and so this is the Hamiltonian it is a 2 by 2 Hamiltonian very easy to solve uh, you can just solve it uh, by putting the determinant equal to 0 and find out the eigen uh, values and the eigen functions. Um, you can make further simplification in which you can write it as a q 0 uh, exponential i phi minus i phi exponential i phi and 0 and uh, you can diagonalize it uh, by just simply you know uh, minus lambda exponential minus i phi exponential i phi and a minus lambda this will give you a q and a minus lambda etc. I mean so uh, then you take the determinant equal to 0 and when you take the determinant equal to 0 this gives you the eigenvalues r plus minus q. So, let us call it a E q uh, plus minus is equal to plus minus q. Okay. So, this is the Eigen values of this 2 by 2 matrix. How about the Eigen vectors? The Eigen vectors can also be found they are pretty simple. Um, I just write down the results, but I am sure that you can do this. So, the two Eigen vectors corresponding to the plus and minus remember that uh, there is their plus and minus signs. So, let us call it a 3. So, correspond to the plus sign and the minus sign the 
uh, wave uh, functions are written as uh, as like 1 by root 2 these are normalized and minus exponential minus i phi and 1 and psi minus is equal to 1 by root 2 uh, exponential i phi and 1 sorry this plus. So, uh, this corresponds to uh, uh, psi minus and psi plus they correspond to the wave function corresponding to the minus and the plus signs of the eigenvalues. Let us now calculate the Berry connection. And how is Berry connection defined? We have defined this. Let us write it like this. This is equal to i and a psi minus and there is a q and then there is a psi minus. Okay? And why minus? Because uh, just to remind you that uh, uh, the Berry connection is calculated by taking the, um, the contribution only from the field band. Let me write this. All right. So, uh, the field band is the, uh, the negative sign and which corresponds to the valence band. So, field means the valence band. Okay. So, the band which is lower uh, here we are talking about uh, the ones that are below the Fermi energy. Okay. So, that is a field band and we are just talking about the field band. Okay. So, uh, we can calculate the Berry connection. Now, uh, one has to uh, remember that uh, uh, this uh, has to be taken as a gradient with respect to uh, the Q. The, it's, we are taking a cylindrical coordinate. So, it is a Q phi kind of space. So, this is um, uh, denoted by a del del Q of um, Q cap plus 1 by Q uh, del del phi of phi cap. Okay? Uh, remember that in that sense uh, this is actually a vector quantity and we should write it with a vector. So, del q uh, is also a vector operator. Uh, now, uh, you see that uh, uh, these uh, psi minus uh, or psi plus uh, we are uh, essentially interested in psi minus it does not depend upon q it only depends upon phi. Thus, uh, this term uh, will not be there. The only term that will uh, be uh, present is 1 by q del del phi of uh, a phi cap. So, uh, then this is equal to uh, it is a i over 2, 2 coming from the normalization this 1 over root 2 here uh, that will give rise to uh, a factor of 2 here and uh, then a minus exponential i phi I am taking the conjugate wave vector that is the the bra of uh, psi minus and uh, i and 1 by q uh, del del phi of uh, exponential minus i phi and 1. Uh, so, now I will have to uh, take this. So, del del phi of exponential i phi you will get a minus i out and this the, the next one will be 0. So, this is equal to i square uh, divided by 2. Uh, so, there is a, a exponential minus i phi 1 and um, uh, this will be uh, exponential i phi and a 0 and uh, this will give rise to um, I think I missed out a minus sign here and this will give rise to a 1 by 2 q uh, phi cap. Okay? So, this is the Berry connection for graphene. And uh, we are eventually interested in the Berry phase which is obtained from the Berry connection by uh, taking a line integral of this Berry connection uh, in the vicinity of the uh, k point. That is, uh, so suppose you have uh, this as the uh, one of the k points say there is a k point and uh, now, uh, so this is the Fermi energy. Okay? So, uh, now in this, uh, so this is like a 2D plane, I am just drawing a plane and uh, so the electron encircles this k point 
uh, and whether it picks up a uh, phase that is unusual or there is a finite Berry phase and that is what we uh, want to find out. And uh, so, the Berry phase Uh, that is uh, gamma this is equal to a dq because we are in the q space uh, we are in the low energy limit of the Hamiltonian. Now, uh, make sure that uh, this calculation that we have done for the uh, low energy Hamiltonian also holds for uh, the full tight binding Hamiltonian which we have derived. So, uh, we have initially derived the tight binding Hamiltonian and from there we have expanded the wave vectors in the vicinity of the Dirac points to get a low energy Hamiltonian. But all these uh, symmetric considerations or even calculation of the Berry phase or other things they all hold for the entire tight binding uh, model. Um, you might uh, wonder that uh, so uh, the linearity is only in the vicinity of the Dirac point and uh, uh, but uh, you know as we move away from the Dirac point uh, the linearity uh, sort of goes away this uh, because of this cosine uh, terms and so on and cosine and sine terms. So, it uh, is not there. Now, the analytic calculations are uh, very easy in uh, the low for the low energy Hamiltonian and that is why we are doing it for the low energy Hamiltonian. Nevertheless, as I said that it also holds if you want to show the time reversal symmetry or the sub lattice symmetry inversion symmetry that is uh, you can still show it with the full tight binding Hamiltonian. So, uh, we calculate the Berry phase here uh, by uh, taking a closed curve in the Q space uh, in near the K point. Uh, if you uh, have noticed it, we have taken this Hamiltonian in the vicinity of the K point. So, this is like a, because there is a, a sign that we have uh, ignored here because there would have been a sign with the a sigma x term that we have ignored and uh, so uh, this is at K point. If you do it at the K prime point, you would get results which are slightly different with some minus signs etcetera and uh, that will also be discussed just in a moment. So, uh, we calculate the Berry phase by taking the line integral of the Berry connection over a closed contour in the you know the, uh, the Fermi plane um, about the Dirac point. So, we are right now talking about the K Dirac point and this one is nothing but it is 0 to uh, 2 pi. Uh, and uh, d phi and uh, q a. So, just to remind you that uh, d q is nothing but q d phi uh, that is the polar uh, converting into the polar angle. So, that the angle uh, angular variables uh, get integrated over 0 to 2 pi and uh, so, this is equal to 0 to 2 pi and uh, d phi and q and a is nothing but 1 over 2 q from the last. Uh, so, this 1 over 2 q in the phi cap direction and so, this will sort of go away and you get a 2 pi over 2 this is equal to pi. Okay. So, uh, the Berry phase uh, of electrons in graphene is pi, but then if you would have done the same calculation at the k prime point you would have got a minus pi. Okay. So, this is really a plus and minus pi and uh, this is another reason for suspecting that uh, one can actually make graphene topological uh, and that uh, would have to uh, be seen. Uh, so, what we mean by topological is that uh, we will have to um, open up a gap at the Dirac points, uh, but uh, nevertheless there will be chiral edge modes. So, there will be modes uh, energy modes or energy states uh, that will uh, traverse across the uh, Fermi uh, surface and will give rise to conductivity. So, uh, if you take a strip of graphene, uh, it will uh, look different in the uh, bulk of the sample that is it will look insulating or rather it will have insulating properties. 
but it will have only conducting properties at the edges. So, the gap will open up. So, the bulk will have a gap, but there will be a conduction uh, that is electronic states will be able to conduct uh, through the edge modes and this is exactly the picture that we have presented earlier uh, in the context of quantum hall samples. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, the Berry phase uh, comes out as uh, uh, you know sort of plus minus pi uh, because of this uh, of course, the, the Berry curvature uh, which is usually defined by something like this is equal to uh, curl of A which is equal to 0 because A is like 1 over 2 q uh, phi cap direction. So, if you take this uh, curl in the uh, polar coordinates, you will see that this is equal to 0 and uh, the churn number uh, automatically vanishes uh, for graphene and because churn number is actually this f uh, into the d 2 k uh, over the surface and this is equal to 0 because the Berry curvature vanishes. Okay. Now, churn number is equal to 0 is not a surprising result because you need to have broken time reversal symmetry in order to have a finite churn number. However, we have uh, shown that uh, of course, that is not the case. We have time reversal symmetry for uh, graphene and uh, that is why the churn number becomes equal to 0. Now, the question is uh, the if you look at this um, Hamiltonian, let us look at this Hamiltonian. You see these uh, the diagonal terms that are 0 okay? and this is one of the reasons that there is 0 gap at the uh, band gap at the Dirac points. If you put a term there that is if you put a non-zero term there that is if there is a sigma z as well then uh, the gap will open up. So, uh, the question is that uh, is there only uh, one way of opening up that gap? We have two symmetries, uh, remember that uh, which protect the Dirac points which, have, which we have said. One of them is the inversion of the sublattice symmetry and uh, the another one is the time reversal symmetry. So, we can actually put a little bit of, uh, so uh, let us go back to that picture that we have uh, drawn here and uh, both are carbon atoms, but say uh, for some reason we uh, uh, give a small bit of potential here and give a slightly different potential at this sides in which case uh, these carbon atoms are not equivalent. And one of the examples that we have is uh, called as um, the hexagonal boron nitride. Let me put a title here. So, how do we open up a gap in graphene. Okay. So, uh, let us talk about uh, the hexagonal boron nitride. And it is written with a symbol HBN, okay. in which case it has exactly the same structure uh, excepting that these are not uh, carbon atoms, but one of them is boron, nitrogen, boron, nitrogen, boron, nitrogen and so on. It is a hexagonal structure nevertheless. And uh, now, this sublattice symmetry is gone, which means that there are different potentials. So, on site energies are different and if we want to write down a Hamiltonian, we will have terms such as uh, say for example, uh, some uh, potential uh, corresponding to the boron site and uh, let us call it a, a, a sub lattice. So, it is like, uh, so I will write uh, this boron with a uh, small b because a and b will uh, otherwise will have a difficulty in understanding. So, it is a C A dagger C A and uh, V N uh, C B dagger C B. Okay. So, this is the boron energy, on site energy and this is the nitrogen energy. What we really mean is that we can introduce a M sigma z 
in the Hamiltonian. What is m sigma z? The m sigma z is uh, in addition to your uh, term which is like um, h cross v f uh, q x sigma x plus a q y sigma y. Uh, you can put a gamma z here just to make sure that uh, we write down the Hamiltonian in the most compact form uh, for both k and k prime. So, now we add a m sigma z where m is a mass okay I mean which uh, comes from the on site potential and it has just for our uh, convenience that it has a positive sign at a sub lattice and a negative sign at the b sub lattice. Now, if we solve this Hamiltonian, it is again a 2 by 2 Hamiltonian, there is no problem in solving it. Now, you will have a form which is um, h cross v f and then you have a term which is like a m and now we have a q x um, and uh, so this is equal to a q x minus i q y and a q x plus i q y and a minus m and that Hamiltonian if you uh, wish to solve of course, uh, this h cross v f let us put that equal to 1 at this moment uh, because otherwise uh, you know you will have to write h cross v f here that is also ok and h cross v f here. So, let us write that h cross v f and then there are m and minus m. If you solve this uh, Hamiltonian you get eigenvalues that are given by plus minus um, h cross square v f square q square plus a m square ok. Now, at q equal to 0 where the Dirac points uh, exist, uh, now there is a gap that opens up and uh, a gap opening up really does not mean anything in the sense that uh, uh, as m increases the, the magnitude of the gap goes up at q equal to 0 that is at the Dirac points both at k and k prime uh, you will have a gap that opens up. Now, opening up of this gap can be shown that it does not correspond to any topological insulator. In fact, it has a name called as a Semenov insulator. So, for uh, non-zero m gap opens up and this is called a Semenov insulator ok. Which means that this insulator uh, does not have any topological property and it acts like a band insulator. Band insulator means just a normal insulator which is gapped uh, and there, there are no uh, counter propagating edge modes or there are no uh, modes that are at the edges which behave differently than the bulk and this is a uh, Semenov insulator. Now, we have one more card in our hand. We have tried breaking the uh, sub lattice symmetry and uh, we failed to get a topological insulator, but then we also have a time reversal symmetry. If we break that, can the system become a topological insulator? Okay. So, let us ask this question how about breaking the time reversal symmetry. Well, uh, there are uh, probably other ways of uh, breaking the time reversal symmetry such as using a magnetic field. Uh, which we have seen the magnetic field uh, automatically breaks the time reversal symmetry. However, uh, uh, Duncan Holden in a paper in 1988, it is a physical review letters paper in which he talked about a complex uh, second neighbor hopping. Uh, what is a complex second neighbor hopping? So, he considered this graphene unit cell once again and so these are the carbon atoms and by the way this uh, paper was written much before graphene was uh, 
discovered. So it was a honeycomb lattice which was taken as a, a model for uh, breaking the time reversal symmetry and he wanted to say that uh, if you break the time reversal symmetry there will be um, Hall effect, quantized Hall effect. Uh, not the one that you get in presence of a magnetic field. So, this is called as the anomalous quantum Hall effect. Okay. So, uh, let me uh, sort of show what a kind of uh, second neighbor hopping. There comes special uh, kind of hopping. Uh, so, these ones that I am, it is a second neighbor, it is not a first neighbor. The first neighbors are uh, belonging to the other sub lattice. So, this is a, a neighbor um, which is a distant neighbor and it corresponds to hopping from A sub lattice to A sub lattice. Now, you understand that when we write down the Hamiltonian in the sub lattice basis, this will be in the diagonal term. So, even though breaking the uh, sub lattice symmetry or the inversion symmetry by putting a M term uh, in the diagonal elements, it did not do anything significant, but uh, these ones also will sit on the a diagonal element of the 2 by 2 Dirac Hamiltonian and uh, let us see what it does. It is not uh, a priori clear what will happen, but uh, so this is ok. So, these are uh, 3 uh, next nearest neighbor hopping. I will draw the other 3 by another color and uh, there is a particular reason that I am doing it. So, this is 1, this is 1 and uh, this is 1. Okay. So, uh, there are 6 uh, next nearest neighbor hopping. Which have 2 characteristics. One of them is that they have magnitude, complex magnitude. Uh, let us call this as i t 2, 2 for second neighbor and uh, the i is a complex number root over minus 1. Okay. And uh, b, uh, the red ones, red one, red hopping, uh, which are uh, say anti-clockwise, red hopping are, have uh, hoppings have uh, negative magnitude that is minus i t 2 and green, green hoppings have positive magnitude or vice versa. It does not matter, but this is uh, we can follow these uh, convention and uh, what happens is that this breaks the time reversal symmetry. Okay. Let me just uh, show uh, very briefly why it does and how it does. Uh, so, if you uh, remember that current uh, is written as uh, current is of course a vector which is written as uh, minus i e h cross by 2 m uh, or you can write it e h cross by 2 m i is the electronic charge and it is a psi star del psi minus psi del psi star. Okay. Uh, that is the definition of current uh, in quantum mechanical current and uh, we uh, have seen this in the context of uh, equation of continuity. Uh, where uh, you know the divergence of J uh, and, and uh, this uh, uh, the time evolution of the probability density are uh, related uh, and uh, uh, they are related by the uh, Schrodinger equation. And um, now, uh, this is like taking a gradient as you see that these are taking the gradient and uh, a gradient means that uh, we talk about uh, in a 1D sense. Uh, uh, these gradients can be replaced by uh, these derivatives which can be written as uh, uh, you know a del f del x. Uh, so, say f is a function of x is like f 
m plus 1 I am writing it in discrete on a lattice. Uh, so, this is equal to f m minus 1 divided by 2 a where a is the lattice spacing. This is like a derivative which is uh, written in a discrete notation. So, if you uh, are uh, making a particle hop from one to another um, then uh, the say m denote the site indices and uh, so the particle will have to hop from m plus 1 to m minus 1 and then the derivative is actually uh, divided by 2a there is of course a limit uh, this this comes from this uh, del f del or df dx equal to f of x plus h minus f of x uh, divided by h limit h tends to 0. Okay. So, this is how we discretize derivatives and I am just written a, instead of uh, this formula I have written a two point formula that is uh, hopping from m plus 1 to m minus 1 and so on. So, uh, if you apply that then the current operator in on a lattice is written as i t 2 and a c i plus uh, let us call it as eta uh, dagger c i uh, minus c i dagger c i plus eta and so on. Okay. Uh, so, uh, because of this negative sign there uh, the time reversal symmetry is broken uh, and uh, so uh, deliberately Holden assumed that uh, there is a chiral uh, hopping to the next neighbor. Chiral means that there is a direction dependent hopping. The uh, green ones and the red ones have different signs which means that the clockwise hopping have uh, one sign and the anti-clockwise hoppings of another sign at that breaks the time reversal uh, symmetry of the Hamiltonian and uh, these eta are nothing but the uh, next nearest neighbors. So, uh, let me stop here for now and we will show that how these uh, time reversals uh, symmetry breaking second neighbor complex second neighbor chiral hoppings give rise to a new topological state in graphene and uh, that is uh, known as the Holden model. Okay? And uh, uh, one will have the Hall effect because the time reversal symmetry is broken and the churn number will be non-zero. Uh, however, there will be no Landau levels. In fact, the paper uh, of Holden in uh, 1988 it clearly says that uh, there will be uh, it is uh, I mean Hall effect without Landau levels okay? and we will call it as a anomalous uh, quantum Hall effect. Okay? Stop here and we carry on with uh, the discussion of Holden model.